design your own life. With Dima Septia Lismana. Subscribe, tekan tombol bell, share dan like videonya ya guys. Terima kasih. I'm going to share with you the science that is so new, it is not yet in the textbooks. It is the science that you and I and our children will use to solve the problems that we're leaving in the world today. It's a very different way of thinking about things. I'm going to tell you, there is a language there is a language that lives in every human that walks this earth. It's a language of no words. It's a language that was lost to Western traditions 1,700 years ago. We're going to learn how to use this language to speak to the divine matrix. Every one of you is speaking to this field every day. The question is, do you know what you're saying? to the field. We ask the question, who are we? What we know is that we're made of quantum energy. For 70 years, scientists have been telling us that we are little particles of quantum energy. And now we believe them. But now scientists say those little quantum particles can do miraculous things, amazing things. But the scientists say those miracles have nothing to do with your life. For example, quantum particles we know can exist as a physical particle, like this. It's a quantum particle. That particle can exist invisible. The particle is still there. It has just changed its form. Quantum particles can exist in one place in a moment in time. Quantum particles can exist in two places or many places at the same time and they are always connected. They are always connected with one another. So the particles are always connected. Quantum particles can communicate with themselves in the past and in the future. This is very interesting. Scientists can take a quantum particle and they know everything there is to know about this particle. They know its rotation, its plus, its minus, its charge in the present. Now, they can take it into the future and now this is the past, this is the future. They can change the particle in the present and it changes the particle in the past even though the past already happened. So the question is, we're made of those particles. So can we do what these particles can do? We're made of quantum particles. Are they showing us our limits or are they showing us our possibility, our potential? Can we do everything that those particles can do? The answer is yes. But it's based on what we believe to be true. Not what we think in our minds. What we believe in our hearts. And that is a very subtle, very powerful difference. Not the mind, the heart. Consciousness is what holds these particles together. Consciousness organizes the particles into your body and into this world. Here's what scientists say to us about the way this world works. Scientists are telling us now that in this field, all possibilities already exist in the quantum energy, in the soup of quantum possibility. All possibilities already exist. In the quantum possibilities, you are already healed. Peace has already happened. Joy is already everywhere. All of the greatest suffering, all of the greatest peace already exists in the quantum possibilities. And here's 
what they say happens with you and me. That with our mind, we reach in to those possibilities. We imagine our healing. We imagine the peace. We imagine our perfect relationship. We imagine the abundance in our lives with our mind. And that's how we lock that possibility into place. And with our heart, we give that possibility life. We breathe life into the image of our mind through the feeling in our heart and make it real in our world. And I'm going to share with you the science of how this happens. We have to understand what a belief is. We talk about belief. What is a belief? Belief is the marriage. It is a union of thought and emotion. Thought and emotion. And now we have to define thought and emotion. This is an image from an ancient Sanskrit text. It shows the energy centers of the body, the chakras. They say that thought happens in the upper chakras, right here. This is thought. This is where we imagine the quantum possibility. The emotion happens in the creative center, in the lower chakras. This is emotion. And they say our emotions are only two, love and fear. So when we think a thought in our mind, we fuel that thought. We give our thought life through the love or the fear that we place into the thought. And when we do that, we create a feeling. And now we have a definition for feeling. Feeling is the union, the marriage of emotion and thought. What we think of a possibility and our love or our fear of that thought. What is the one energy center in the body that does not have the circle? What is the one center that we have not talked about here? The heart. Feeling happens in our heart. Feeling doesn't happen in the mind. Feeling doesn't happen in the lower, well, a little bit, but not much in the lower centers. Feeling happens in our heart. Feeling and belief are connected. Feeling and belief. So in our hearts, we have hate, sadness, joy, compassion. These are feelings. These are not emotions. To have hate, sadness, joy, compassion, we must have a thought and then the love or the fear for that thought that creates these feelings. So now we have a definition of feeling. So our belief translates the quantum possibilities that we imagine into the physical reality of our world. And I want to show you how. I want to show you how that happens. I don't want you just to, to believe me, to take my word. I want to show you the proof so your mind can see the proof. Belief is what translates those possibilities into the atoms of our world. The quantum possibility exists as waves only. But this world is made of atoms. So I think you're going to like what you're going to see. Do you remember a long time ago, when I was in school and maybe when you were in school, we were told that the atom looks like this. Looks like a little solar system. Long time ago, remember? And we were taught that the atom is made of things. A thing in the center and things that orbit, things that circulate, okay? That's not what scientists believe today. Now the atom they believe looks like this. It looks like energy. The atom no longer looks like things. It looks like waves of energy rather than particles of things. Now this is very important. You're going to see why. I think you will like what you're going to see in just a moment. So the quantum atom is made of waves of energy rather than particles of things. 
and this is very important, this is very important. If you want to change an atom, you have to change the energy that the atom lives in. If you want to change the stuff, the physical stuff of our world, you must change the energy that that stuff exists within. We're going slowly because something big is about to happen here. Einstein said this very well. Einstein actually said the field that connects everything together is what he called the governing agency of the particle. Einstein said the field is what determines how the atom behaves. It's in the field. So the field that we're talking about, the field is made of electrical energy. It's made of magnetic energy, two energies. The field that holds everything together. This is out of a, a traditional text, a traditional physics text. Look at what this says. This says if you change the electric field, that you will change the way the atom behaves. And there's actually a name for this. It is called the Stark effect. So if you change the electrical field, the Stark effect, you change the atom. Or if you change the magnetic field, it's called the Zeeman effect, you change the atom. So all this is saying is that science knows today if you change the electrical field or you change the magnetic field, you change the atom. Okay, watch what happens. What organ in your body produces the strongest electrical field in your body? Your heart. And it's where you have the feeling. A feeling is actually creating waves of electrical and magnetic energy in your heart that changes your body and changes your world but you don't have to know that because you simply had a feeling. And this is what the ancient understood and what they left in their temples, in their texts, in the monasteries, in the language of their time, they understood this. Our heart, look at this. The human heart produces the strongest electrical and magnetic fields in the body. Some people said the brain the brain does produce these fields, but look, the heart's electrical field is 100 times stronger than the brain. 100 times stronger than the brain. The heart's magnetic field is up to 5,000 times stronger than the brain's magnetic field. Our heart produces the fields that change our world and change our body. Can you see that so far? Beliefs create the electrical waves. Beliefs change those magnetic waves. What you believe about yourself, what you believe about me, what you believe about your world, about your relationship to God, about peace on this earth is creating what is happening on this earth right now. Beliefs change our physical world. Beliefs change matter.